Hi, my name is Steven. I'm here on behalf of Farmsville with our first video blog. I'm here with Leslie Dan, the founder of Nova Farm, the second largest pharmaceutical manufacturer in Canada before being acquired by Teva. He was also a notable philanthropist. He received he was awarded the Order of Canada and the Order of Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Dan, for joining me and agreeing okay. to taking the opportunity. So I guess I just wanted to stir, start off with a very uh, general question you may receive all the time. When you began Nova Farm, was there a particular reason why you decided to go the generic route? Yes, the reason is that uh, there was an opportunity to develop less expensive, good quality medicines. And I felt that there was a need at that time. There were too many generic companies. And I felt that this particular sector would grow in time. And that's exactly what happened. Because today it's a huge world mining industry. Every country today has several manufacturers making generic products. Of course, and so when when you uh, started your manufacturing in Canada itself, what, did you see a, a lot of competition, or were there really any barriers that you had to overcome with name brand drugs, for instance? There were always barriers when you are in an industry. The barriers were competitors. At the time when I started in 1969, there were approximately 12 companies. They all disappeared except one. The other one survived. There was a problem with the brand name companies because we're trying to break patents, which in our opinion were invalid, and they were invalid in virtually all cases. So the concept that we had to be in the courts uh, fighting many parts of litigations. And of course, a third problem is to have enough funding. Yeah. You when know, your manufacturer requires a lot of funds, and then we have to arrange for sufficient funds so that the company will operate. Luckily, all of the issues were resolved. Okay, and just, I guess just going back to what you said earlier, you said there were 12. 1965. Uh, there were 12 competitors, you said, when you started up? And you said you were the only one that survived. Yes. So, I guess what brought you or led you out of that whole pack? Um, I would say that. Good management. Yeah. That's a secret of any company because what we see today, look at the computer industry, it's changing almost by the day. Yet eventually the stronger companies emerge. And the same thing is in any industry, to the pharmaceuticals. Okay. I guess just to follow up on what you also said, is uh, like one of the biggest debates in the pharmaceutical industry is brand name versus generic. And you definitely have experience on both sides of the spectrum. So I guess. Do you see the validity in putting a price tag on innovation or even putting a price tag on economic stability or do you think there needs to be some sort of balance that needs to be found or how should that be done? Innovation is certainly expensive, everybody knows that. And uh, every manufacturer is entitled to recoup their investments. The question is sometimes they recoup it many times, which means that once the particular product has been written off as to the expenses, the price doesn't change. Competitors enter. Uh, we understand it and we give full uh, credit justification for charging the proper prices for any brand new product. Yeah. Okay, and I guess um, just following up with that, um, like from the 1980s to now, even, that we see the expenditure in research went from almost from 6 billion to almost 70 billion, and the number of drugs filing for FDA approval and Health Canada approval has increased from. 300 to almost 5,000 or so. Yet the number of drugs that are being approved by these governing bodies, by the FDA and Health Canada, has been always stagnant or has plateaued. Well, what's happening is that the FDA and also the agencies in Canada are more and more demanding. It's becoming more and more difficult and lengthy and costly to launch a new product. So there might be many applications, but we read the paper that many products just or not. So I guess, why do you think, uh, do you think these stumbling blocks or these barriers are ne necessary for the industry or? Yeah, well, it's a matter of opinion. Yeah. The manufacturers sometimes think that at times the regulatory agencies will be too far. Yeah. The regulatory agencies say that they want to be sure that the product is not harmful. 
time for that. Oh, the side effects which may turn up later. Indeed, some cases, some medicines have to be withdrawn from the market, like Biox, because the problems arose later. later yeah. So you have to balance the two diverse and interests. Okay, so I guess when you say um, balance the bold and diversify the hour, I guess. In your opinion, how do you think that can be done? How, how can that be well, achieved? Well, you can do this. To, uh, you would usually sit up with the FDA regulatory agents and then you have to give your arguments why you feel that a certain additional test may be not be necessary. Uh, yeah. But uh, usually regulatory agencies look for additional data to give them a sense of uh, security that the information is sufficient. Okay. Perfect. And like you mentioned right in the beginning that you know you started in the industry in the early 60s and now we're in 2012 so you've definitely seen the various different changes that have taken place in the industry so I guess would you want to comment on that and if these changes were for better or for worse? Well the changes are enormous because you would the public is definitely better because now many important medicines are available at moderate prices which say 20, 30 years ago may not have existed. From the viewpoint of the large manufacturing companies, brand new companies, there is a potential threat that one by one they are losing their even products because the earners is not easy to replace them. So they have to do um, quite a bit of uh, acrobatics, so to speak, mergers, acquisitions, so that they can continue operating. But at the same time, uh, that's unfortunately happening in every country. So that's a general problem for any of us like today. How to remain a leader on one hand, get the, and be competitive in the marketplace on the other hand, and innovative too. Yeah. And uh, I know you just touched upon a lot of the big farmers. Right now, there are a lot of mergers and acquisitions taking place. So do you think when this does take place, that innovation will still continue? or? Well, innovation must continue because if there is no innovation, there are no new products. And the new products derive the revenue and the income of the companies. So this is like a one way road. Yeah. And they must do it. And uh, becoming more and more difficult to come up with a good product, but it's happening. Yeah. You're finding other applications. Okay. And I guess from when you started off in the industry, um, like you said, there were 12 competitors. So I think. You know, when you first started off and you got your first uh, molecule approved tetracycline, well, I guess what were the emotions that ran through and like that was definitely a big barrier that you surpassed. So what made you, you know, motivated you every day to make sure that you did get that and take you to the next step? Well, again, you had to, we started with one product, which is understandable, but we had to introduce constantly new products. And you probably are aware that in the 1968, 69, There was definitely uh, many mentors you may have had. So, what was the best piece of advice that uh, I think that, that you received? Well, the best piece of advice: be positive. <laughs> Don't be afraid uh, that there is competition. Be well prepared in terms of funding, in terms of staff, in terms of products, and I would say good management. Good management is always important. important. So, I guess um, when you started off in 1965, how did you make sure that you always had good management? Well, you have to select the competent people on the staff. You have to make sure that uh, you have enough volume, you have enough uh, earnings so that you can keep going. And um, you have to have uh, facilities which meet the regulatory agency requirements. Every requirement has to be in condition, it has to be uh, well done so that you Okay, well, thanks a lot, Leslie, for taking your time 
and giving us an insight into the pharmaceutical industry and the hurdles that you have surpassed and also the advice that you give to future entrepreneurs and philanthropists also. My only comment is that in 1965 when I started, it was not easy to get into the pharmaceutical business, but it is even more difficult. You will see that as time goes on, every industry becomes more and more complicated, more sophisticated, more and more under regulatory, new regulatory, demanding uh, requests and uh, requirements, and uh, you have to be well prepared to be before you launch any manufacturing. Okay, perfect. Thank you.